this video we will explain what a building consent is, when you need one and how to get one. The building consent process ensures your project complies with the New Zealand Building Code. Building consents are required for all sorts of buildings, but here we will focus on residential homes. First of all, see if your planned project is listed as an exemption in Schedule 1 of the Building Act. There is a guidebook for Schedule 1 that lists a range of low-risk building projects that do not require a building consent. While Schedule 1 building work can be done by anyone, it still needs to comply with the building code. Any plumbing and drainage work needs to be carried out by licensed or certified people, whether or not a building consent is required. The homeowner is responsible for determining if the work requires a building consent, as well as ensuring any work complies with the building code. Note, there may be other rules and regulations you'll need to comply with. Some common examples of Schedule 1 exemptions include a retaining wall that retains less than 1.5 metres of ground with no additional loading, a deck that is low to the ground, a pergola that is not roofed, a fence shorter than 2.5 metres, a shed smaller than 10 metres square and more than its own height away from the boundary. There's also a range of projects relating to repairs and maintenance. If your work isn't listed in Schedule 1, a building consent is required. You now need to find out if your planned project is classed as restricted building work. Restricted building work must be designed and carried out or supervised by a Licensed Building Practitioner or LBP. The LBP is responsible for ensuring compliance with the building code. However, if you are the homeowner, you could apply for an owner-builder exemption, but you need to know that you would be responsible and liable for the work. LBPs are available in five areas of building work. Check that the people you're using have the relevant licenses on the LBP website. Restricted building work affects either the primary structure or the water tightness of a house. The primary structure includes the beams, bracing, columns, foundations, roof and walls. Water tightness systems protect the house from outside moisture and include damp proofing and waterproofing, the roof and wall cladding. Examples of restricted work might include moving load-bearing walls, adding a room onto a house, a complete repiling of a house, or building a new house. Some work might be classed as non-restricted building work, where you don't need an LBP to do the work. Here, if you do the work yourself, you will be responsible and liable for meeting building code requirements. So how do you get a building consent? First, compile your building consent application documents using the forms and guidance information on our website. As a minimum, you'll need to provide a Form 2 application, plans, specifications, a completed checklist, proof of ownership, and a copy of the Building Consent Fee Calculator. If you have an agent acting on your behalf, you'll also need to provide a letter confirming their appointment. Once you have compiled the information, you can submit it using the Share File Portal on our website. You will receive confirmation when your electronic files have been uploaded. You will also need to make payment of the required fees before your consent can be processed. It takes up to 20 working days to process an application. If we ask a question, your application is put on hold until we get this information in full. When your building consent is granted, you can start the work. Be sure that you or your LBP read and understand the requirements of the building consent. Your building consent will list the inspections required at various stages of the project. For a new house, these will range from site set out to cladding and roofing through to insulation and bracing. Please ensure your plans and any relevant documents are available on site and that the inspector has safe and unobstructed access to the site. If you have applied for a building consent, you should not start the work prior to the consent being issued. If you do, you could be fined, asked to remove the work you've done or be issued a notice to fix. Unconsented works may make it difficult to sell the building or to get insurance. Once all site inspections are completed and approved, the final step is to apply for the Code Compliance Certificate. This is the final stage of your building consent and it confirms you have carried out as near as practically seen work that was done in compliance with your building consent. It will go on your council property file and will be relevant for getting insurance or to prospective buyers. 
This video only gives an outline of building consents. Please check our website for more information. Happy building!